uh, no one would ever know. Um, so the recording's just started, and here we're talking about um, falling down, basically. I was just talking about um, uh, falling off my bike, going down a steep hill, except it wasn't that steep, and breaking my collarbone. Uh, and it made us all think about uh, steepest descent. Uh, and that, that is a you know, good method for actually uh, getting down a hill, so long as you don't break your bones. So um, the thing that we're going to talk about in this video uh, is the method of steepest descent, which is sort of the, uh, the introductory, the first, the simplest method of something called gradient descent. And now gradient descent um, is absolutely um, one of the most widely used um, optimization algorithms uh, out there. So in previous videos when we've talked about um, things like applications like neural networks and things like this, and I've said that you have to do optimization on these things, literally how these things uh, get optimized, so literally how your um, deep neural network um, learns to uh, predict images of cats and dogs um, is by doing optimization under the hood and it's literally doing a variant of uh, gradient descent. So this um, uh, is a key practical algorithm. So here's the idea. So let's say you've got some uh, convex function here, and you want to define you want to find some uh, algorithm that will take you down to the minimizer, will take you down to the center uh, of this valley. And so a pretty good way to get from the top of that surface uh, down to the bottom is going to be to descend along, to you know, to look around, see which way is which direction is the steepest heading downhill and then head into that direction. So if you imagine looking at the top of, looking from the top of this um, surface and cutting a slice through it, so a level curve there, um, you know, so you're at some level. You know, if you're standing at that red point, uh, if you look around yourself and say, well, behind me, um, it's going uphill, um, you know, tangent to this curve, it's going flat, I can walk around the surface, but head, I can head down into the center uh, of this by heading along the gradient. So as long as I can calculate negative grad F, um, then that's a good direction to head in to start heading towards the bottom. And that actually is the guts of um, a really uh, a great uh, optimization algorithm for actually finding the minimizer. So we need a couple of little uh, de uh, definitions here. So the first thing um, is what do we mean by a direction that's heading downhill? So what's a descent direction? Well, um, it, you know, it's pretty obvious if you're thinking about um, falling down a hill. Um, but mathematically, you know, a dire some direction u, so remember that a vector u here um, is points in some direction, right? So a direction u is a descent direction if, if you take a step, if you start um, at a point x, right, and you take some step in the direction of u, that's what x plus lambda u means, it means you're moving some direction from x in the direction of u, um, if you end up, after taking that step, being lower than you were at f of x, at point x, uh, then that's a descent direction. That's the formal definition. You know, we need to use it for proving things, uh, and it crops up in theorems, but you know, it's pretty, it's kind of obvious. So, and here's a, uh, a good algorithm, right? It's actually quite a good algorithm um, for actually uh, finding the minimizer of a cost function. So let's say you're standing at some point x, k, right? And uh, so a good algorithm here would be to choose some descent direction, uh, starting from where you are, uh, and then find some uh, distance, you know, find some step length, that's the lambda k, and in fact a, a particularly good uh, step length would be the thing that minimizes uh, this object here, you know, that, uh, that makes um, f of x k uh, plus uh, lambda uk, so you know the function value at your new location uh, makes that as small as possible. Right? You don't want it to be too small because you, you won't have moved far, um, but if you think about a convex function like the one we plotted before, if you go too far you'll start going back up the hill. Right? Um, so you want something that minimizes that, um, and then you take a step, you move to that new location and you keep going. Right? That's a pretty good algorithm, and that's the, that's the heart of a gradient descent algorithm. Um, so, of course, it's not as simple as that, right? So there's always some direction u. You can all, if you're standing on the surface um, of a convex function, you can always find a downhill direction. That's not too hard. Uh, and in fact, there's plenty of gradient descent methods uh, that uh, throw away all the work 
uh, in step one there by just literally randomly choose a direction and check if it's, um, if it's bigger or smaller. But the question is how to find a good direction. Right, how, what's, how to find a good direction to head in, a really steep direction that doesn't, that takes you downhill quickly. Um, interestingly, you know, this middle step can be quite sophisticated, right? You might find, say that finding a, uh, um, a step length that minimizes some, uh, some function here, that looks quite complicated. But actually, you know, if you think about it, if you th uh, think about once you've chosen your direction, Think about uh, looking along that, looking in that direction down the, uh, your surface. You know, you have a one-dimensional, um, you have a one-dimensional line, a one-dimensional curve there uh, of height. Um, and so, actually, what you're doing is a line search. You know, a direct search like the, um, you know, like our dichotomous search and uh, uh, golden ratio search, um, and all of those search algorithms that we've talked about uh, in the previous part of the course. So we can actually use that stuff for doing, um, you know, full-on uh, gradient descent. And of course, with all of these uh, algorithms, there's a question about how you terminate these things, and that's just a choice that you have to make. But essentially, everything in optimization um, sort of boils down to an algorithm that looks uh, a lot like this. So you have these things to consider, and actually there's a, diff a, a, a range of different variants of this algorithm. For now, let's just focus on this first question, you know, how do you find a good descent direction? So there's a theorem. Um, that helps us to do that. Uh, I think I won't prove this theorem um, because it's quite similar um, to the theorem that we proved uh, in the last um, in the last video about um, conditions for global minima. So this uh, theorem you can prove by using Taylor's theorem, um, uh, just as we did in the previous video. Um, but the theorem says. And then here's a way to find a descent direction. So for every differentiable function, so you need to be able to differentiate f, um, and for every vector u, you know, the limit of that object there, which looks an awful lot uh, like a derivative with respect to lambda of my function, right? that's the first principle's definition um, uh, of, the, of, of that derivative just about, um, is equal to you know, u transpose gradient f of x. So that's cool. Um, and then the important thing is actually in this line down underneath, which says that if I calculate, uh, if I find a direction u, and if I calculate u transpose times the gradient of f, uh, and if that's less than zero, then u is a descent direction. Right. So, so long as I can find a u that satisfies u transpose times the gradient f of x is less than zero, uh, then I've got a descent direction. I can do my gradient descent. I can head downhill. So how do I find what this u is? I've got a criterion for checking whether a given direction um, is a descent direction. Can you think of a way to choose u that guarantees that u transpose times the gradient of f is negative? Yes, you should be able to. So if you choose uh, u to be negative of that thing, right? So if I can, um, if I choose u to be negative gradient f of x, then that's definitely going to be, that's definitely always going to be negative, right? Because u transpose gradient f of x um, is going to be, you know, the gradient of f all squared. Right? So the, uh, the norm of that all squared is always going to be positive. I've got that minus sign hanging around in front. So that's how you find a descent direction a way to find a descent direction. It may not be the best descent direction, right? So for example, if the minimizer of this, you know, if, I, if this is a symmetrical uh, convex function here that I've got my level curve through, right, the, the gradient at this point points uh, in that direction. It's going sort of across the, uh, across the basin there. If the minimizer were in the middle, you know, it wouldn't be the most efficient thing. Like I wouldn't be heading sufficiently towards the minima. Um, as I could. But it would work, and I could keep doing this. And so that's the guts uh, of something called the steepest descent algorithm. So the irony here is that the steepest descent might not, even though it's the, taking immediately at each step the steepest way down the hill, it might not be the best way to get to the bottom um, of the hill or the bottom of the basin, um, but it's a pretty good algorithm. So basically you take, you calculate u equals negative gradient f of x, and here's my algorithm. So I start at some point, right? 
Um, and then I'm going to calculate the gradient of my function. This is why the theorem said that the, uh, f had to be differentiable, right, because I need to calculate grad f. So let's find that, um, let's find that descent direction. And then I'm now looking in this direction, uk um, down this basin, yeah, and so I'll find how far to step in that direction uh, to get to the lowest point that I can in that direction. Right. Um, and then I'll turn, I'll find, a, uh, you know, I'll, I'll update, I'll, I'll go to that point in space, the point on my curve, and I'll update and I'll do this all again. So I'll keep heading in the steepest direction down, and eventually I should wander uh, towards the stationary point, um, towards the minimum. Um, and that's the steepest descent algorithm. So there's a few things to say here. Um, this is a clever thing to do, right, to find... Um, the optimal step length to adaptively choose uh, how um, far you step um, each time you step through this algorithm. But you don't actually have to do this. You could, you could fix that. You could skip that step, in, step entirely and just fix lambda. So take the, you always step you know, three meters um, no, matter how, no matter where you are on the surface. Um, and that's something to explore um, here as well. Um, you, know, you also don't need to always choose that. So rather than um, uh, proving things, uh, let's actually look at some examples of this. Here's, I prepared this website earlier. I commend this um, uh, website to you. What you should do is you should go to this website and you should click on the gradient descent thing here and play around with the toys. Um, now that's a good spot. That's a good spot to um, end the video. And you've been encouraged to go and actually look at this stuff now. So we could pause there and I cut the video. Um, but let's, you know, let's, um, uh, let's keep playing uh, anyway, because I've got some time. So let's actually take a look at this. So this is a very, ni very, very nice website, uh, and you should have a play uh, with this. So it's like a little textbook. So by the way, um, uh, Fabian Pendragosa here from Google um, is, the, uh, is the first author of this scikit-learn package in Python. So if you know about scikit-learn, that's uh, one of the... Um, uh, top Python packages for doing optimization and for doing machine learning and stuff. He wrote it, so this, this is a, a commendable, you know, commendable person. Um, here's a gradient descent algorithm, and here is um, it's kind of a stupider, um, it's, it's, it's a stupider variant that I just described. So I'm going to fix my step size, uh, and then I'm just going to um, calculate the negative gradient, negative grad f at every point and it will keep stepping. So here's a few examples. So here's one example where we have a nicely conditioned um, convex function. So the optimum is right in the middle there. Um, and the cool thing about this is you can move this around and you can see how these things actually work. So I'm taking a fixed step size here and you can see that this works pretty well. If I make the step size very, very small, then if I make it too small, well, it takes a long time to get to the optimum. But, you know, Nothing really too weird happens here. If I make it huge, then sure, I overshoot a little bit. But that works just a bit slowly. So that's how it works on a nicely behaved cost function. If I didn't have quite as nicely behaved a cost function, so something that's uh, sort of not symmetrical, right? so it's long in one direction, so it's very steep going down in this direction, but very shallow uh, in the horizontal direction. So you can see that what happens here is we converge quickly to the shallow bit, but then it takes a long time to walk down there. So this doesn't work. This takes a long time to converge, and some kind of weird stuff can happen, right? If I take steps that are too big, and then I overshoot, I start going back up the hill um, here, and so it takes, I oscillate. It takes me a long time to converge, but I still get there. Here's something even worse. And this one is a non-convex function. So this is banana-shaped. Right, so the minimum is here, and then my surface curves around. Right, so this is non-convex because if I choose two points um, on this surface, if I choose a point here where that starting point is, if I chose a point over there, you know, between those two points, if you can imagine this, a straight line would cut through the surface. It wouldn't stay above the surface. So the curve that's in this and the banana shape in this uh, means it's non-convex. So you know, none of my theorems work here. But actually, if I use gradient descent, you know, it kind of works okay, right? 
But if I make my step size too large, then bad things can happen, right? So actually, you can get some bad stuff going on here, and this is kind of fun to play around with. All right, so there, I don't actually converge to the optimum. So you know, that's not a coincidence, right? So that's because you know, I can prove things will work, and I can prove that things will always work. They might work slowly um, for convex functions. For non-convex functions, actually, all bets are off. So gradient. Uh, descent tends to be, because it's such a simple algorithm, it actually works pretty well, but you can't prove, you know, things can go awry and you're not really sure when things are going to go badly. You know, things are going to go crazy like that and you don't necessarily converge to the solution. Right? So that's bad. So, um, you know, just quickly, uh, in the last couple of minutes here, you can do clever. You can do cleverer things here. So this is not the um, uh, the example I just showed you in the slides. This is a backtracking line search where you keep making the you you keep making the step size. Uh, um, oh, sorry, you, you keep the step size the same unless you overshoot. Unless you you don't go downhill, right? So if you don't go, uh, if you find that you you've stepped too far. You step back and you divide the um, uh, you divide the step size by two, right? So if um, yeah, my new step is uh, not larger uh, than the last step, then I go and I divide this, right? I, I, I go and um, make my step size smaller, uh, smaller and smaller, and I, I redo that step. And so what happens here? So the nice the nice version works nicely. That's good. Um, the not quite as nice version works pretty nicely as well. You can see that it's taking big steps, and then here it has to take smaller steps so that it doesn't overshoot. You can see the sort of overshooting happening there. And actually, even on the non-convex version, um, this is a an algorithm that works pretty well. Right? So all of a sudden, by adaptively making my um, my step sizes smaller and smaller when I need to. Even though this is non-convex and I can't prove anything about it, it actually works. It actually works quite well. So that's sort of you know it's an ad hoc way. This is a pretty ad hoc algorithm, uh, but it works. Um, you know this you can assume, um, and, and turns out to be an even better um, sort of algorithm just for the uh, for a little bit of extra mathematical cost of actually needing to uh, run an inner loop here where you need to do dichotomous search or golden search, golden ratio search or something. Um, yeah, so have a play with that. It's lots of fun, um, and that's uh, and that's gradient descent. It's actually a really good uh, method, and we'll talk about a bunch of different uh, variants of it in the next video.